Hey guys, Seventh here, and I'm coming back at you with a new list of stuff to invade your brain, stuff that you should be playing but may have not ever heard of. Today we are looking at Metroidvanias, available on the PSN, although I'm sure they're also available on Steam, Nintendo Z Shop, and uh, Xbox Live. So feel free to imbibe in whichever platform you prefer. I love me some Metroidvanias. This is going to be fun. Some of them are really good, some of them are okay, and some of them barely even qualify as a traditional Metroidvania at all. But we're going to be looking at them all today. This is seven Metroidvanias available for the PlayStation Network. Okay, coming in at number seven is Chasm. This is one of the more traditional Metroidvanias on the list, and I love this one an awful lot. This one was one that would probably feel closest to a traditional Metroidvania for you guys out there. The storyline is pretty fun, although it's not anything mind-blowing. You play a knight who has just finished his training and is being sent on his first mission to investigate the disappearance of several miners in a small mining town. You come across this mine they've all been working in, and you start to find that something is amiss. I love the look of this game. Uh, I love the music in this game. It all just fits really well with the period. The map system works very similar to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, with warp locations that can take you to various parts of the map. It has cool puzzles that you have to solve to unlock specific areas of the uh, mine. And For example, on this area, there is a painting that you have to observe on the back wall. Like right here, you'll see there's eight stars on the wall. Later on, there's a lock that you have to unlock, and you have to know how many stars, how many swords, etc., to put in the correct combination to unlock it. Then you have boss battles like this. So far in my playthrough, I haven't run into any overly difficult bosses, but they are fun and they're a lot of fun to look at. They're cool designs. The actual combat is a lot of fun. You have different weapon classes and weapon types. You don't get stuck to a particular one. You can mix and match for with what you want to try out. And the weapons in particular, they all have a unique feel to them. The more club style weapons are very slow and cumbersome to use, but pack more damage. The swords are faster, but inflict less damage. You've got spears and various other things. And it's just uh, keeps things from getting boring because you can always switch up different weapons for different enemy types or different situations that you're going to run into you can not, you also have a leveling up system you have a magic system for casting various spells you uh, ha you can change your armor there's just a lot to love about this game Coming in at number six, we have Iconoclast. Iconoclast is one of the more expensive ones you're going to see on this list, so be forewarned about that. I can't say for sure if that's the same on uh, Switch or on Steam or what have you, but as far as PSN goes, this was one of the most expensive ones that I'm covering today. Iconoclast is basically about a young female engineer her father was an engineer, taught her everything he knew. He's passed away, and she has taken up the mantle of being an engineer in his stead. The problem being is that she lives in a world where being an engineer is considered sacrilegious. And there's this totalitarian government who's chasing her down trying to stop her they confiscate anyone's tools if they find anyone has tools on them or has been fixing things and yet they all use technology themselves such as this boss fight that we're having to fight here and you'll notice during the boss fight you have to go and unscrew something use of your uh, tool is actually your wrench or whatever you want to call it is actually of more use in the game than the actual gunplay is. Uh, you'll find yourself using that way more than your gun. 
Also, you have little puzzles like this, which are more just timing and rhythm puzzles that can unlock additional items for you to use, such as bombs to blow up barriers to get into areas that you previously couldn't get to. It's got a very cartoony style. Uh, the music is fun and upbeat, and it has a kind of a tongue-in-cheek sense of humor. It feels like something that would appeal to someone who's into, for example, the Shantae series. If you like any of those games from way forward, you would probably like this one a lot. Part of what really sets it apart from the other games on this list is the way that you navigate through the levels using your tool to flip you up to higher areas and things of that nature. It's a lot more platform heavy than combat heavy like some of the other ones we're looking at today. But I think this one's a really good one. If you like that kind of thing, especially the Shantae series, it's worth checking out if you're willing to pay the higher price. Coming in at number five is Odalis or Odalis. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. This is a game that really wears its influences on its sleeve because, my lord, they really love Castlevania over there. Now, when you first load this game up, you're going to think I'm crazy and you're going to think it's not a Metroidvania at all because when you get a look at the map because the map is split into levels like a classic Castlevania or even a Ghosts and Goblins style game. But you will clearly find areas in those levels where you can't get to them yet. And so you're going to have to go and find things and then go back to those levels to unlock those hidden areas and get better weapons and better gear and what have you. As you can see, it's very Castlevania inspired. Some of the gameplay, in my opinion, is a bit slower than what you experience in Castlevania. But they really nailed the look and sound and it's even got this really cool filter going on that gives you that scan line look and even has a warp to the screen so it looks like you're watching it on an old school curved screen CRT. It does play a little bit slower and the controls are not quite where I would want them to be in the area of responsiveness but I do feel that they succeeded in nailing the overall time period that they were going for here. Uh, it really does invoke a game from that period of my life, and if you enjoyed this kind of game on 8 or 16-bit systems, then this one is worth a look, and it's not really that expensive either. So if Odalus looks like something that you would like to try out, I can think of worse games to play. You should give it a go. And they also have other games from this era that I will get to on a different video. Coming in at number four is Yoku's Island Express. If I'm going to lose you at all in this video, this is probably where it's going to happen. Yoku's Island Express is a combination of a platform friendly metroidvania and pinball you are this little bug thing and and you, and you're leading a, a pinball around and you navigate this metroidvania style world via playing pinball you use pinball to destroy enemies you use pinball to unlock other areas it's quirky but it's fun and it's got a relaxed, laid-back vibe. I really like it. Coming in at number three is The Mummy Demastered. I know what you're going to say. It doesn't have Tom Cruise in it. Yes, it's based on that crappy Tom Cruise movie. It does have Russell Crowe in it, but I digress. This game was made by Way Forward, the guys who do the Shantae games, and it's a great Metroidvania. Great graphics, great music, great control. Huge boss fights. Only complaint that I have 
is that the enemies never stop respawning. There's no such thing as clearing out a room and then the en enemies don't come back unless you leave and go back to the room you're in before. In this game, they constantly respawn. And so you have to be a lot more accurate with your platforming and your shooting because there is no such thing as standing in a safe spot and killing all the enemies and then making your way through the platforming parts. Not at all. This game keeps you on your toes. It's challenging, but it's fun. And you would have never thunk it. I bet a lot of you didn't even realize this game exists. But it does, and against all odds, it's great. Coming in at number two is Time Spinner. Time Spinner is also what you would consider more of a traditional Symphony of the Night style game, although the graphics are more cartoony than what you would get out of Symphony of the Night. This game takes place in the far future, where there is a, a tribe who for eons have had control of a time travel device. This evil corporation or evil kingdom decides they want control of it and they come to steal the time device from said tribe. Just as they are about to claim victory, the hero's mother sacrifices herself and sends her daughter back in time to try to stop this evil nation from ever coming to power in the first place. You have use of time travel mechanics in the game that come into play. You have lots of different weapons that you can use, weapons you can choose from, different forms of attack, whether it be magic or more traditional weapon style, like right now I'm using uh, magic to craft a sword type weapon. The graphics are fun. The gameplay is tight and responsive. The story is interesting. If I could give it any negative, it's that I'm not really a big fan of its music. There's a lot of music in this game that's just really down. It's, it's very mellow in a lot of areas. And in areas where I feel there should be a lot of excitement and upbeat music, it's almost like kind of relaxed lounge music in some areas. So I think maybe some wrong choices were made in the soundtrack. Again, like with Iconoclast, this is also one of the more expensive ones available on PSN, so this also will depend on how much you're willing to pay to experience it. But overall, it's a really good game, especially if you are a fan of this genre. Check it out. All right, folks, I've saved my favorite for last. Coming in at number one is Omega Strike. Oh, Lord, this game blends so many different things that are my favorite things. You know what I'm saying? There is a little bit of Mega Man. There is a little bit of Metroidvania, Symphony of the Night. There's a little bit of Contra. There's a little bit of Metal Slug. There's a little bit of even something more obscure like Journey to Silius. It just plays with a lot of different cards in its deck. And I can't praise it highly enough for it. Especially because of the fact that this is a game that I just found at random. It's been out for a while. I had no idea it existed. I had never heard of it. And I figure, considering how much time I spend going through the PlayStation Network store looking for things to play, if I didn't know anything about it, chances are a lot of you don't know anything about it either. But it is so good. Here you see the hub world. The storyline is kind of generic. You have a military team who... Uh, are fighting to stop a uh, evil Dr. Evil type from taking over the world and th all the other members get kidnapped. And so you start out as the member that you see there and you have to go and rescue your teammates. Well, each teammate has his own special skills that allow him to get through certain areas of the game that your first guy cannot get through such as pushing blocks like this. 
Or there's other areas where you need to be able to double jump, but only one of the characters can double jump. And so as you rescue your teammates, they return as part of your squad, and you can change from character to character on the fly as needed to get through the particular areas of the map that only those characters can reach. The gun, the gun combat is a lot of fun. It's a good mix of Contra and Metal Slug and other things of that nature. Each character has his own particular weapon style, so you can also switch between characters during boss fights on the fly for use of whichever strategies or whichever weapons work best with that particular boss. There's some thought that goes into it to get past some of these fights. Uh, the layout of the levels is great. Uh, as you can see from the snippets of the map that I've shown you, very Metroidvania inspired. The graphics are 16-bit style. They evoke memories of Mega Man games of that era, maybe even a little bit of Gunstar Heroes. But also, there's some aspects to it that really call back to 8-bit stuff. There's sections of this that remind me a lot, again, of Journey to Silius graphically. The sound, the music, oh, I love the music in this game. It is so good. There's just, I have literally nothing negative at all that I can say about this game. The platforming and the shooting, the controls is so, so crisp and spot on. There's no issues with the controls whatsoever. They really put a lot of work into getting this right, guys. And this is also not one of the more expensive ones out there. It's a crime that after all this time that this game has been out, I can't speak for Steam, I can't speak for Switch or any other platform this game might be on, but I haven't been seeing any of my PlayStation friends talking about this at all, and some of them are as big into Metroidvanias as I am. It's a crime. Come on, guys. This is one that's a real must-have. You gotta go pick it up. And that was our list. As always, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you actually go out and buy any of these, make me a response video talking about how much you enjoyed the game or didn't enjoy it. Let me know how much you agree or how much you think I suck. I want to hear it all. If you're new to the channel, please toss your friendly neighborhood 7th a like, favorite, and subscribe. And I will see you all again on the next 7th list. As always, folks, this is 7th.